Today in the Audio Hotline studio, we have a small diaphragm condenser microphone. So this microphone is made by the company SE. So I'm not entirely sure if the name is SE SE7. I would assume not. I'm just going to call it the SE7 and just leave it at that. But in all reality, the SE SE7, I don't mind saying that. It's kind of a fun time. Give it a shot. But the main reason I decided to try this microphone out in particular is because it was a recommendation by a subscriber. That subscriber is Cool School. Thank you for the recommendation, Cool School. I do appreciate it. I love it when people comment what microphones I should try out. But we'll get into this tiny little microphone right after this intro plays. <laughs> What's up, audio nerds? Welcome to the Audio Hotline. Just fair warning, what Cool School said when he recommended this microphone is that it is actually a fantastic vocal microphone, even though it's supposed to be an instrument microphone. Now, one thing I don't get too hung up on when I'm using a microphone is what it's meant for. Obviously, there will be times where that shines through and you're like, yeah, this is an instrument microphone, it sounds like shit on vocals, or this is a vocal microphone, sounds like shit on instruments. But not only will I test out vocals with this, I will also test out the acoustic guitar and electric guitar here in a little bit. But I am actually quite curious as to whether or not this could be good for podcasting, you know, YouTube, YouTube gaming. A lot of people like and want the condenser sound, but end up getting a dynamic microphone because they need background noise rejection that's a little bit better, or they have an untreated room. Sure, it doesn't have the same big sound as like a one inch condenser microphone, and it also doesn't have as good a background noise rejection as a dynamic microphone, but it's a pretty decent compromise somewhere there in the middle. Well, enough of me talking about this microphone. Let's go ahead and get to some other stuff. Today I am using my Zoom H6 with a Mogami cable to record the SE7, and my gain is set very simply at 40%. You can buy the SE7 on Amazon for $99, and I will have an affiliate link down below if you want to use that and help this channel out. Well, now let's go ahead and talk about what comes in this adorable little SE7 box. When you purchase the SE7, you will get a microphone clip, with a stand adapter, you will get a tiny adorable little windscreen. You will not get one sticker, you will get two stickers. You will get some documentation, and of course, you will get the small diaphragm condenser microphone, the SE7. When it comes to everything in the box with this microphone and the build quality of the mic and the accessories, I really think that it is honestly very good for $99. I feel like recently I've been getting some really shitty quality microphone clips with microphones, and I'm glad to say that this one is actually nice, and also the windscreen on this, it's fine, it's nice, it's nicer than like really cheap ones for sure. The microphone build itself is honestly fantastic. I feel like these small diaphragm condenser microphones are just built super well. They're just so sturdy. Another cool thing about this microphone is that it actually does have a bass roll off as well as a 20 decibel pad. That 20 decibel pad can come in really handy when recording instruments and the bass roll off itself we'll test out here in a little bit. But if you watch this channel, you know that one of my favorite parts of this box, these stickers. Hell yeah. I'm a big sticker guy. I like sticking things on stuff and things. Well, now that we've gone over some of the basics of this microphone, let's go ahead and nerd out and talk about these specs. The SE7 is a condenser microphone with a half inch back electret condenser capsule. This has a cardioid polar pattern and a frequency range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with a sensitivity of negative 34.5 decibels, a max SPL of 136 decibels, 156 if you have the 20 decibel pad on, an equivalent noise level of 16 decibels, and a signal to noise ratio of 78 decibels. The low cut filter on this microphone drops off six decibels per octave at 80 hertz. And as stated before, this does have a 20 decibel switchable attenuation pad. This is in fact an XLR microphone, and since it is a condenser microphone, it does require 48 volts of phantom power. When looking at the frequency response of this microphone, looking at 20 hertz, there's about negative four decibels right there, and it slowly climbs up to zero at about 200, 250. After that, it is pretty flat up until it reaches a little after 2K, and then it slowly starts to bump up and then hits probably about a three to four decibel boost around 8K and then drops back off. Looking at these specs and the frequency response of this microphone and knowing that it's a $99 microphone, I actually think that everything looks really good. 
One thing that is nice is that the equivalent noise level is 16 decibel, which I mean doesn't mean this microphone is the quietest by any stretch of the imagination, but for small diaphragm condenser microphones that's actually pretty quiet. And even on the box it claims that it is the quietest mic in its class. Well now that we've gone through the basics and the specs, let's go ahead and test this microphone out. Fair warning, when I test this out I will use the windscreen and I will also take it off. I do think it's good to know what a microphone sounds like with and without a windscreen so you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Alright, let's go ahead and get close to this mic without the windscreen. If you want to get really close to a microphone that grabs way too much breath, then here is how it's going to sound. And if you want to put a windscreen on to help with some of that breathiness, then here's how it would sound. All right, seriously, watch yourself on this plosive test. I'm warning you. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. 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 <laughs> And if you talk into the microphone while you turn it around, here's how it sounds. And here's how it sounds. Yep. Right now I am banging on a keyboard right behind this microphone. And here is how it rejects the sound. And maybe you're thinking, hey, I may be able to use this for my YouTube videos. Put it a little bit further away so it's not on the camera screen. Here's what it would sound like at about 50% gain on the Zoom H5. Six. Zoom H6. I used to use the H5 and now it's the 6, I apologize, yep, yep, always switch that up. Now let's go ahead and test some of these switches. You will need something small to put in there and push them. Alright, here's the microphone, just flat, 0 decibels, here is the 20 decibel pad. And that is how much it takes away. Now let's go ahead and engage that high pass filter. Alright, here is the microphone with the bass roll off, 6 decibels per octave at 80 hertz. And honestly, this sounds pretty cool because you can get a little bit closer to it. You don't have to worry too much about getting all that breathiness because that usually happens in those lower frequencies. So right now I'm right on top of it and this is how it sounds. And now we will go back to flat mode and there is the difference right there. The bass roll off actually isn't too strong here, which I don't mind. I think it's nice just to have a little bit. I kind of like the subtlety of it. Now I'm just going to do a quick post processing test. Here is the microphone with some EQ on it. I'll of course put the EQ graph of what I did up on the screen so you can see it. And here is some compression. I don't know if I'll have to use a noise remover because sometimes I use a noise remover when the compression, you know, brings that noise floor up, but this is already pretty quiet. So I might not use it. If I do, I'll uh, put it down here somewhere that I, that I did in fact use it. Now let's go ahead and move on to those guitar tests. Well, now that we've gone through the basics, the specs, and the testing, let's go ahead and get to my review of the SE7. I was very excited to try this microphone out. I love it when a subscriber comments and they're like, I love this microphone, you have to try it. I get a little bit more hyped than when I just randomly pick a microphone and just go for it. But also, if I don't like this microphone, I think I have to hate that person. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just joking. We all have different tastes in microphones and we all have different needs and everything. There are microphones that I'm sure that I like that other people don't and vice versa. What you get in the package with this mic isn't extraordinary or anything, but it is all nice. It's great for 99 bucks. The sound quality of this microphone for instruments and vocals is awesome. It's good. This is just a good all-around microphone. I would actually recommend that if people want a little bit more of a condenser sound that they check this microphone out as well as some of the other handheld condenser microphones that I've tried out. But I do think this is a very good option. One thing I will say though is the handheld vocal condenser microphones probably are a little bit better at plosives. With this you do have to angle it from your mouth a little bit more. If you don't like angling the mic even when you're talking directly into it the plosives aren't that bad because this windscreen, dude, does work. Work! It does work, dude. I think that even if you're going to talk directly into it, it's not terrible, though. I would definitely hold your P's back a little bit. Work on that technique. Hold your P back, bro. That's gross. I can see it, man. Gosh. Ew. Why can't I stop looking at it? Ugh! I think that one thing people would like to gripe about with this is the plosives. But dude, like, yeah, they're not great when the windscreen's off. But a lot of other condenser microphones are awful at plosives when you're not using a pop filter or windscreen. So you can't really get mad when this actually does a better job than a lot of other small diaphragm condenser microphones out there when it comes to plosives on vocals. I just think that this is a very nice microphone to have in your arsenal, whether that be for instruments or vocals, like it's it's 99 bucks, it's a reasonable deal, and it sounds friggin' awesome. So I definitely recommend this microphone. I gotta agree with Cool School on this one. So the grade that I give the SE7 is an A+. The reason I gave this an A plus is because I just didn't really have anything to complain about. I think that you could use this microphone in a lot of awesome different ways. You could use it for podcasting, you know, you could use it for spoken word, you could put a little bit of distance in between you if you're like a YouTube content creator, and you could, you know, bump up the pre's a little bit since this is relatively quiet, and you could get a pretty good sound out of it right there. And also on instruments it does sound good. Something like this I wouldn't recommend for singing. I just don't think that that's really its specialty. But overall, I gotta give serious props to SE. I think this is a fantastic microphone, and I'll be keeping it around. Thank you all for watching the audio hotline. I really do appreciate it. And thank you to all of my subscribers. You are wonderful people. You're just, you, you're just the best. You're an A+. Plus. You're freaking grade A top choice meat. I'm not like objectifying you by calling you meat. I didn't mean it like that. I was just trying to, you're good. You're good. You're, you're great. That's all I, I was, all, I was just trying to say that. Stay tuned for a lot of other reviews and other videos. Once again, thank you all for watching the audio hotline. I'll see you audio nerds next time.